If you are looking to invest yourself, then you need to choose an investing platform. 14 years ago, when I first started investing, there wasn't a great deal of choice. But today, there's a bewildering choice of investment platforms available. And there's also a bewildering array of YouTube videos trying to help you choose the best platform. But there's one thing that these YouTube videos rarely mention. And this one thing is actually my number one priority when choosing an investment platform. And it's based on a principle from a quote from Charlie Munger, who is one of the world's greatest investors who sadly passed away recently. And that is, show me the incentive and I'll show you the outcome. Before we get on to how Charlie Munger helps you and me choose an investing platform, let's get back to basics. If you wanna invest some money in the stock market and you're gonna do it yourself, you need to find a platform that allows you to buy and sell investments. Here's how I think about choosing a platform. The first thing is to check that they're regulated with the FCA. Once that basic is taken care of, you need to think about does the platform offer what you want? And I split this down into two components. Number one, does the platform offer the tax wrapper that you're after? For example, if you're looking for a lifetime ISA and a pension, does it offer that? If you're looking for a stocks and shares ISA, does the platform offer that? The second thing is, does the platform offer investments that you want? For example, some platforms only offer their own funds and no shares, and that's not necessarily a disadvantage. In fact, it can be an advantage, but is that what you want? The next thing to look at is to how does the platform charge fees? In general, platforms either charge you a percentage of your investments, which can be better, for smaller investing amounts, or a fixed fee structure, which can work better for larger amounts. Here, I'm looking for a clearly labeled and easy to understand fee structure somewhere on the platform's website. Ideally, very obvious. Some of these platforms fee structures are ridiculously complicated and in my opinion, designed to catch out the unwary. And that is a bad sign in my opinion. The next thing to think about is what are your needs? If you are gonna need to speak to them on the phone because you don't like doing things online, then you're gonna have to choose a platform that has good telephone customer support and vice versa. If you prefer to do it online, you might be looking for an app or a good website. But then we get on to the most important factor. And this is around how the platforms make money. Because some platforms are free. Amazing, you're thinking. But these platforms need to make money somehow. And this is where Charlie Munger's quote comes in because the incentives are not aligned. You chose the platform because it was free, but the platform needs to make money from you somehow. And this is analogous to the gambling companies that offer you a free 50 pound bet when you sign up today. Once you've had your free 50 pound bet, the gambling companies know that you'll go on to lose much, much more than 50 pound. As the saying goes, if something's free, you are the product. Buried in the terms and conditions of these companies will tell you how they make money. Some do it by charging extortionate foreign exchange fees that catch out unwary customers who, for example, buy an investment denominated in US dollars when their base currency is sterling. Some make money by having a bid offer spread, which is similar to how the bureau de change at your airport works. They buy and sell at different amounts. Lots of platforms do something called interest rate arbitrage, where this means if you have cash balance on the platform, they might charge you 1% interest, which is way below current market rates. And they might use that 1% cash that you're storing and charge out of 5% somewhere else. So they're making 4% by offering you way less interest on cash balances than they should. Another way is payment from order flow. This is not allowed in the UK, but definitely is allowed in America. But the worst way that some of these platforms make money, in my opinion, is from encouraging bad investment behavior. That's right. Assuming you've got an investment strategy that matches your risks and your goals, minimizes taxes and fees wherever possible, it's likely that the major determinant of how well your investments do long term is your own behavior. And some of these platforms, in my opinion, are encouraging bad behavior. Let's take a look at what this means. Here's a chart that shows the effect of bad investing behavior. What we have here is on the far left, somebody who in January 1995 put 10,000 pounds into the S&P 500 as an investment. 
In December 31st, 2014, that £10,000 would have turned into £65,453, assuming that person did nothing. They didn't buy or sell, they didn't get in and out of the market because they were tempted by other high-risk investments. But let's have a look at someone whose behavior wasn't so good. This person got tempted to buy and sell, perhaps they thought there was a crash coming, perhaps their investing platform sent them some information about how they could be trading CFDs and not a boring S&P 500 tracker, and they got tempted to buy and sell when they shouldn't have. As a result, they missed the 10 best days, just 10 days they missed in the market, the 10 best days. And instead of getting $65,453, they would have got $32,665, a 6.1% return. So a massive cost from bad investing behavior. And let's look at the next person who, instead of putting the $10,000 in and leaving it and doing nothing, they got tempted and missed the 20 best days of the market. Well, this person wouldn't have got $65,453. They would have got just $20,345. So hopefully that shows you the effect of bad investing behavior. How do some platforms encourage bad investing behavior? Well, if they can't charge you for your free ISA, they need to make money from you some way. And a lot of them do it by trading what's called a contract for difference or a CFD. CFDs are high risk investments. And according to the platform's own website, 70% of retail investors, that's me and you, lose money trading CFDs. The company is structuring incentives like getting rich quick trading CFDs with the outcome that you'll likely end up losing much more money than you would have by getting that free ISA initially. Other platforms encourage you to buy and sell individual shares, again, somewhere where retail investors historically don't perform very well at all. And others will advertise expensive actively managed funds to you. Contrast this to a platform that charges an upfront fee. This can look expensive and for some platforms, especially the, those that are established in the market, this can look expensive and for some platforms, especially those that have been established in the market for a while, it is expensive but the incentives align. These platforms have no get rich quick schemes like CFDs to sell you, or sometimes even individual shares to sell you. They won't bombard you with enticing emails to trade CFDs or the latest hot stock, which might have been hot six months ago, but now is almost certainly overvalued. Instead, they're incentivized to encourage good investing behavior, to buy and hold and hopefully increase the assets that you have and that you pay them to hold for you. Your incentives are aligned. So you might be wondering, what platform do I use? Well, telling you that would require a list of disclaimers so long, it would be almost useless. But for me, no single platform covers all my needs. So I hold my main stocks and shares ISA on a platform that charges a fixed upfront fee. The charges are really transparent, really clearly laid out on the website. I hold my lifetime ISA on a different platform because my main ISA platform doesn't offer a lifetime ISA. And I hold my kids junior ISA on a free platform. But I understand how this free platform makes its money. And I'm an experienced investor that's not gonna be caught out by the sneaky ways that this free platform needs to make money. As soon as my kids get control of their junior ISA at age 18, I will move them from this free platform to a platform where the charges are transparent and the incentives align. So I hope that's helped you to choose a platform. Let me know in the comments what you think about this. And if you like these videos, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you wanna see more. See you on the next video.